Okay. Let's see how this do. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see how I'm looking. Let's see how I'm sounding too. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm sounding pretty good. All right, looking and sounding pretty good. All right, sorry about that, y'all. Hopefully, this actually does a uh, better. For some reason I kept dropping frames on my other uh, program, so I don't have the theatrics on this one. So I might have to uh, convert them or edit them in and et cetera with my introduction. But anyway, uh, what I'm going over today, I'm going over, uh, and I might have to do this old school, but I'm going over the meaning behind some of the things that we read in the Bible. Uh, the problem is a lot of people don't understand what's going on in Scripture, right? Uh, they actually, they, what's the word I'm looking for? They freelance it. They freehanded. They freestyle it. They don't understand that the Bible itself is built upon a principle of finding the the deepest way to communicate uh, to the recipients. And the recipients would have been those Israelites uh, first, before anybody else would have been the recipient. So. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to explain and expound upon some of the information, some of the deeper meaning. So, before we open the Bible and start reading it, right, and trying to extrapolate all of that deep knowledge, the first thing that we got to do, we got to understand how the Bible itself is written. Now, people... For some reason, they feel that the ancient Israelites and their greatness uh, don't have the means to make literature that has deeper meanings, right? Like, like literature that has idioms and metaphors and allegories, right? So I'm here to say that this is exactly what the Most High used in order to make sure his message went out plain and clear. And I can see right now that um, I have bad connection here too, but I'm going to continue going on. Uh, I'm going to check my volume every once in a while, guys, just in case. Alright. So I'm checking I'm checking my, my volume to make sure everything is okay. I uh, see my image is not as clear as it should be, but, you know, we're going to go through it. So, Today we're going to be using Philo. Well, we're not going to use Philo, no. Um, but Philo himself, Alexandrian Jew, he was one of the first ones to explain that the Bible, the Torah itself, give me one second, was able to explain the Torah itself had a deeper allegorical meaning. He was trying to explain this to the Greeks because the Greeks was like, some of this stuff they were saying don't make sense. But he was explaining that the Torah had this deeper allegorical meaning. Uh, and he was actually a Jew. Lived around 20 B.C. to 50 uh, C.E. There's also a book called Misreading Scripture with Western Eyes. Because a lot of people do that. Uh, they don't look at the, the cultural aspect of the Bible. They want it to be in a, a straight-up Western book created by uh, people living in the United States of America. And we're going to go through the Uncleus too, the Targum Uncleus, which is a paraphrase that the people of the first century definitely had uh, dealing with Scripture. So, we're going to go through the two trees today. And we're going to use all of these these means, right? We're going to use all the things that I have. Uh, idioms explained in the Bible by uh, Dr. George Lomsa, who was an um, Aramaic uh, speaking 
uh, uh, individual who grew up over there in the Eastern world, who still knew some of the cult, uh, the customs. Uh, he said that he also um, had lived in society that seems unchanged since the time of Christ. And he had, he offered over a thousand uh, crucial idioms, explanations in this Bible. Also, things dealing with metaphors and figures of speeches and everything else. So these things we need to know before we start trying to go inside the Bible and try to teach what the Bible really means and etc. You got to understand, are you taking these things at face value or are you taking them uh, the deeper understanding behind it? That's on you. So I'm going to start off in Genesis 2, uh, 9. The Bible says, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now we got to understand there was plenty of food, right, in the garden. And it was pleasant to the sight, so pleasing. It was pleasant, something that they could, they was pleased to look upon and good for food, to take in food, something that you take in, something you grow from, right? When you think of food, it's nutrition, something that, that, that you use for nurture, right? You ingest it. It helps in your healing and, and living, right? So it was good for food. So you got to understand all of the the allegorical means and the parabolic means of which you're supposed to be extrapolating from this, right? So you had two trees now, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now they could partake, right? They could ingest life or they could ingest knowledge, all right? So let's go to 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. So they can eat of any tree in the garden. You could ingest it, take it in. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the day that you ingest that knowledge, of good and knowledge of evil. That same day that you ingest it, take it in, try to live off of it, you will die. The day that you look for knowledge to lead you and to nourish you, you will die. So once you go to Genesis 3, 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So now, this knowledge that they got, the knowledge of good and evil, it was a heavenly knowledge. It was a knowledge that the deities had. Don't forget, everything in the garden was perfect. So it wasn't something that was unperfect or imperfect. But it was something that man did not need to live off of. It was something that man didn't need to survive off of. That was the point. That knowledge of good and evil, man did not need it to survive, to live. So now when man got that knowledge, it was impossible for him to go back into life, to him living a way that will promote life because now they're living off of knowledge of good and evil. So let me give you an example, right? If you are in a classroom and the teacher tells you, if you guys don't, as soon as you walk in the room, if you don't sit down, you're going to get in trouble. So that means that you have the choice to sit down or not, right? But what if a person don't know? What if the person didn't hear the teacher? Would he or she get in trouble for not doing, not coming in the room and sitting straight down because they didn't know it? No. 
They could roam freely. They had the free choice to make mistakes. It would be okay because they did not know any better. But when you get that knowledge of good and evil, when you know, aka if the teacher takes the same words and write it on paper or, or on the board and anybody and everybody can see it, you are no longer excused from the ignorance that you first had. Now you have, are held accountable because you know what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. You have that knowledge of good. You have that knowledge of evil. Before it was written down, before um, it was set in stone, you could freely uh, transgress, go against the teacher's rule, play ignorant because of your ignorance and etc. But once the 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 once it came, the the the, the law, once it's written down, that is taken away from you. So this is some of the allegorical means of what's going on in scripture. So I want you guys to think about the example that you that I just gave. Now I'm going to read the Targum Oculus. And I'm going to read the same story from the Targum Oculus, right? That's the paraphrase that they, that this guy, it was said, Uncle uh, was said to write it. He was a convert. He lived from 35 CE uh, through, uh, well, he was a convert during the time of the, of the Tanakh, between 35 and 120 uh, CE. So someone between that time. So now, Genesis 2 and 9, this is what Uncle has said. This is how he described it. Once again, the paraphrase, uh, not the exact text, but a paraphrase, what they was actually uh, using a lot of the Targums in uh, first century, second temple uh, Judaism. So now, Genesis 2 and 9. And the Lord God calls to grow from the earth every tree desirable to look upon and good for food. And the tree of life lives, or lives, in the midst of the garden. And the tree of whose fruit they who eat know between good and evil. So Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord God commanded Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden, eating, thou mayest eat. But of the tree whose fruit they who eat no between good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest it, dying, thou shalt die. And I'm going to go to Genesis 3, uh, 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, man is become singular or alone, yet kid, and the world by himself. Knowing good and evil. So now, uh, you know, there was animals and etc. inside of the world at the time. But now mankind was the only one that knew good and evil. And now, lest he stretch forth his hand to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So now, we go through that story. We read the story of Adam and Eve, right? We read about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, uh, Adam get kicked out the garden, etc. The problem is, no one is truly explaining what this story means. I mean, even right now, if you can tell, look, I'm uh, actually on, uh, I'm live, right? No one cares right now of what's going on you know nobody cares to know what's going on with the tree of knowledge of good and evil uh it seems like the bible itself has last lost has lost its spark unless someone's misusing the bible and misleading the people giving it a western connotation which the bible doesn't do but i digress i'm going to continue so nobody thoroughly explains this tree of knowledge of good and evil but I'm going to try my best through the will of the Most High. And hopefully he opens my understanding as well as the, the listeners of these individuals that's listening to this. And uh, grasp a hold of their heart and my heart also and give us this deeper explanation. Lord's willing. So 
I'm going to try to tackle what this allegorical story is dealing with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as well as the tree of life. But I'm going to be concentrating on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, Philo then already told us his uh, the way that he viewed this allegorical story that Moses got. And a lot of people, a lot of the Jews in the first century, especially around uh, the Egyptian part, they actually uh, loved Philo and loved his explanation. In fact, some of the church fathers gave kudos to Philo on how he brought out the information. But anyway, so now, let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. I'm going to start at 15. So this is after they got uh, the commandments, you know, they got the uh, covenant, uh, got the blessings and the curses. So this is Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Well, let me just read it. I'm going to read it from the Targums. I'm going to read it from the Targums. Let me read it from the Targums. Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 19. I'm going to read it through what they would have been way more familiar with in the first century because we know our uh, Old Testament, the Masoretic text, came around like the 10th century. So I'm going to read from the Targum something that they would have been familiar with closer to their time period. Uh, in the first century as well as before. This is what it says in Deuteronomy 30, 15. Behold, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. So look, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Behold, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. So now they know uh, that they got the knowledge of life and death. They got the knowledge of good and evil. For Verse 16, for I command thee this day to love thy God, sorry, to love the Lord thy God, to walk in the ways that are right in his presence and to keep his commandments, statutes, and judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. So that's that life that they learned. And the Lord God may bless thee in the land which they are going to possess it. Verse 17. But if thou heart be averse, and thou wilt not obey, but will go astray and worship the idols of the Gentiles and serve them, I have shown you this day, that perishing, you shall perish. That's the death. You will not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to enter in and possess it. So we see what the life was and we see what the death was. The life, they do the commandments, statutes, and judgments. The death, they will perish out of the land. Uh, 19. I call heaven and earth to attest in you this day that I have set before thee life and death, blessings and curses. But choose for life that thou mayest live, thou and thy children. So now notice in verse number 15, he said, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Down in verse 19, he said life and death, blessings and curses. So the blessings equate to life. The curses equate to death. But choose for life that thou mayest live, thou and thy children, to love the Lord thy God, to be obedient to his word, and to keep close unto his fear. For he is thy life. And the prolong of thy days to abide upon the land which the Lord swear to thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them. So the blessings and the curses would, would represent the life and the death. 
But notice, this was the tree that he did not want them to eat from. He didn't want them to eat from the tree in which they learned commandments, statutes, and judgments. Because once they ate from that tree, they had to learn these tenets in order to live. But they also had to learn what would happen if they don't do these tenets, which would be die, a.k.a. the curses. So in this uh, scenario, in Deuteronomy 30 in the Torgums, the tree of knowledge of good and evil represented the law. Once again, the tree of knowledge of good and evil represented the law. Now, let me let me show you something real fast. Um, Deuteronomy 30 and 18. Listen to what it says. I have shown you, I have shown you this day that perishing you shall perish. Once you go to Genesis, right? Genesis 3, I believe, is similar language. Or it might have been Genesis 2. Genesis 2, 6, 17. But of the tree of who true they who know uh, between good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest of it, thou dying, thou shalt die. What did he say in Deuteronomy 30? And 18, perishing, you shall perish. Dying, thou shalt die. To show you that the tree of knowledge of good and evil would have been considered that what Moses gave to Israel. Israel had the choice to listen to the Most High. That would have been the tree of life. Israel said, no, we want to, we will listen to you, Moses. So Moses brought them the law, which would have been the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But if that don't do it for you, right? If you say, I don't know if the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the, um, is the law, we're going to uh, go through and we're going to uh, go through the New Testament and listen to to the language, right? We're going to listen to the language because that language is very, very, very important. So, uh, give me, uh, give me two clicks and I'll be right back. Two clicks. All right, y'all, I am back. I had to go get my headphones. So now, all right, let's see how I sound. Let's make sure I still got audio. One sec. I have audio. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer so I don't stretch the headphones out that much. Okay, so now, I'm going to prove that the tree of knowledge of good and evil dealt with the law. So, we're going to look at the New Testament now. Now, if what I'm saying is correct, this would mean that when the Holy Spirit came and et cetera, the Holy Spirit would have used uh, some of the stories that Moses said. Uh, well, it would have explained to disciples or through the disciples as like an allegorical means also. In other words, if Moses, who had the Holy Spirit, 
wrote the Torah in an allegorical nature. When the disciples quoted from the Torah, or when the apostles quoted from the Torah, they would have been using it in an allegorical way also. So now, let's look at Romans 6. Let's go to Paul. Y'all know us. We love us and Paul. I know y'all people want to uh, go there and say Paul is hard to understand. But in in um, context, it said Paul's uh, breakdown of the new heavens and the new earth was hard to understand, not all of his uh, literature. So now, let's go to Romans 6, 23. This is what it says right here. Notice, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die the death. I guess I can quote from Philo real fast, right? I guess I can quote from Philo, who said that all of these things was allegorical in nature too. As you can tell, I go here a lot because I got it highlighted. I got it underlined and everything else in my book of Philo. If anybody got Philo, it's page 36, allegorical interpretation one. This is what it says, line 105. Accordingly, God says, in the day in which you eat of it, thou shalt die the death, or perish and you shall perish, or die, death thou shalt die. And yet, thou that thou eating of it, they not only do not die, but they even beget children and are the causes of life to other beings beside themselves. What then are we to say? Surely the death is of two kinds, the one being the death of the man, the other, the peculiar death of the soul. Now, the death of the man is the separation of the soul from his body. But the death of the soul is the destruction of virtue and the omission of vice. And consequently, God calls this not merely to die, but to die the death, showing that he is not speaking of common death, but of the peculiar death and a special death, which is the death of the soul buried in its passions and in all kinds of of evil. So that's according to Philo, right? So according to Philo, that death was a death of the soul, uh, the death of a person wanting to please the most high, a death that causes someone to be selfish and etc. But anyway, so in Romans 6 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So now, once you go back into Genesis, what what are we presented with? Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. For the wages of sin is death. All right, what else was going on? Uh, Genesis 2, 9. And of the, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. See what Paul is doing? He's showing you what this story that Moses gave actually meant. So you got the tree of life, and then we find out the gift of God is eternal life. And then you got, if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. For the wages of sin is death. So do you see the correlation that Paul was using between death, them dying, the wages of sin being death, if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what was you, the payment? What was the wage? You will surely die the death. So then they had the other option to eat from the tree of life. What does he say? The tree of, uh, sorry, the gift of God, the gifts, the blessings of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift, the blessings, we already read it in Genesis, right? Uh, sorry, in Deuteronomy, that the blessings would represent life. The curses would represent death. The gifts of the Lord through Jesus Christ is life, tree of life. The wages of sin is death, tree of knowledge of good and evil. But, if that don't do it, right? I'm going to go to Romans 7. I'm going to start at verse number 
seven. I guess I should have started. Uh, uh, let's see here. Nah, I'm going to start at seven. Uh, Romans seven, seven. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. Let, I, this, this is one of the most important points that you guys got to get. I, I, I want you to understand. Let me let me make sure my audio is picking up so we get this. Hold on. Okay, I'm picking up. I'm picking up. So let's say it again. God, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. Now, what is said in Genesis 3, 22? And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. What did Paul say? Revelation 7 and 7. I had not known sin, but by the law. Man has become like one of us to know good and evil. I had not known evil, sin, death, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, now I want you guys to listen to how he explains this. Once again, Paul, understanding the allegorical nature of what Moses was trying to explain using the story of Adam and Eve, which was a similar story that they already had in ancient Egypt and et cetera, Mesopotamia and all that. They all had a creation story. So Moses piggybacking off those uh, uh, societies, he created one for himself. And what I want to say created, he kind of borrowed and added more to it because People want you to think that the story of Adam and Eve was actually supposed to be about the beginning of creation and how uh, it came to be. You know, it's an allegorical story that had a different meaning. So now listen to what he says. Verse eight, but sin taken occasion by the commandment. Do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you do, the day that you eat of it, thou shalt surely die the death. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. Without eating of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, that sin that you was doing, that you didn't know that you was doing, that you was doing ignorantly, it was not imputed to you. What did David say in Psalms? Blessed is the man whose sin is not imputed on him. Blessed is the man who eats from the tree of knowledge. I mean, eats so long. Oh my gosh, I almost messed up. Sorry about that, generous, uh, gentlemen, men and women. Blessed is the man who eats from the tree of life. Not is not blessed is the man who eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So blessed is the man blessing life. Blessed is the man whose sin is not imputed unto them. That means that they don't have the law that addresses what they should or should not be doing. Therefore, that sin is not held against them. They're living life righteously, not having laws to tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing because they are choosing righteous. And when they sin ignorantly, it's not held against them because they don't have to, the law to tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing. So, but sin taken occasion by the commandments wrought in all manner of con uh, concupiscence. I think that's it. For without the law, sin was dead. So listen to what it says. For I was alive without the law once. But when the sin, but sorry, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The, the knowledge of good and evil. 
the knowledge of good and evil. I was alive without the law. I was with the tree of life well, before the law came. But when I ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, I died. I was alive before I learned all of these things that was making me sinful. And when I learned all of those things that was making me a sinner, I died the death. And look, verse number 10, and the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. This is what eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil would do. They learned the good, which is the blessings. They learned the evil also, which is the sin. So now they understand what's good, what's acceptable, and what's not acceptable. And that causes one to die because now there's no excuses. Okay, let's see here. For sin, verse 11, for sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. This is back into the Garden of Eden, how Eve was actually, let me get it, how Eve was actually deceived by the snake. That snake deceiving Eve was like mankind being deceived by sin. All of this is dealing with the Garden of Eden. Wherefore, the law is holy. Because remember, the Most High created everything in the garden. Everything in the garden was perfect. Even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was perfect. It was holy. It was the understanding that the Most High had. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy, just and good. The tree of knowledge of good, the law is holy, just, the commandment holy, just and good. The tree of the knowledge of good was then that which was good made death unto me, good and evil, God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me, that by that which is good. So he know what was good, which was the law, but what was evil also was how he was going against the law. So the law was good in nature. They found out that if I wanted to be a perfect being to the most high, I only had to do all of this stuff. The downfall of that was I can't do all of that stuff. So now, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Okay, so now we got it right there. How the tree of the knowledge of good and evil represented the law, right? And the tree of life represented the gifts from the Father through Christ. So you got the free gifts and then you got knowledge of sin. Free gifts, knowledge of sin. Free gifts, earning gifts. Freely given. Now you earn it. Tree of knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. So now let's go to Romans 8 and 6 to give you another way to look at it. But to be, hold on, let me, let me make sure I got this. All right, let's see here. For to be cornerly minded, is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace once again we got this understanding if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you will die the death to be carnally minded is death that carnality those laws written down not in the heart but written down for them to do it that carnality them trying to do all of that carnally, uh, rules, 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 not changing the heart. Them just like walking around like zombies, doing the rules, trying to find ways to get around them and etc. That carnal minded was death. 
them taking the things, reading the Torah, uh, not getting the spiritual understanding behind it, uh, using it to uh, do wickedness. You know, they look at David, how David was a was a, a warrior. Now they want to be warriors. They want to go out. They want to kill. They want to uh, um, uh, destroy and etc. Like Moses did, like David did. War, 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 because they was looking at the carnal minded behind it. But to be spiritually minded, the gifts of God, to have faith is life and pure. So you got the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right there and the tree of life right there. The carnal mind versus the spiritual mind, right? Carnal minded would be uh, death. Spiritual minded would be life. So now I want to go to Galatians 3. So about that, y'all. My, uh, I think my internet messed up. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm still on. Maybe. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. I'm just trying to make sure I'm still on. My, uh, for some reason, my internet cut off. All right. So now. Once you go to Galatians 3, I'm going to read, start at verse 11. I'm going to read down to 14. It says, but that, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. So now you got one option, right? You got the just living by faith. And I know that I miss. Uh, I look uh, kind of bad. That's just the internet connection. But you got one way to live. Remember, it was true. Two trees in the Garden of Eden. They could partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or they could partake of the tree of life. Right? They could uh, eat tree of knowledge of good and evil. They could eat uh, the tree of life. So now look, this is how ancient literature works. The just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith. So this is different. The law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So now, Paul, once again, understanding the allegorical story, the allegorical means of what Moses brought out with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So this is what you got right here. You got one group of people, the just, living by faith. You got another group of people living by the law. So now, the just shall live by faith, and the man that doeth the law has to live by the law. So, this is, you got two trees in the Garden of Eden, tree of knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. Now, which one do you think would represent what? Would... The just living by faith, would that represent the tree of knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life? Now, understand, look what it says. The law is not of faith. So these are two separate trees, right? The man that do with them, the law shall live by them. So now Moses, I mean, Adam, which one did Adam choose? Did Adam choose to live by faith or to live by the law? Did he eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life? So Moses, I keep saying Moses, Adam would represent those that live by the law, having knowledge of good and evil. Don't forget, we just read, Paul said he didn't know sin until the law told him what sin was. So he didn't know, he didn't have knowledge of good and evil until he got the law. So now let's keep reading verse 13. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Because remember, they all was in the body of Christ. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So this is how Paul looked at it right here, right? 
Paul was like, okay, we're in the body of Christ, right? So if we're in the body of Christ and in the law, it states, cursed is everyone that hangeth from a tree and Christ was put on a tree as a, as a, you know, the, the crucifixion, he was put on the tree, not a little tree hung, but he was put on between two trees, just in case people don't get it. But he was put on a tree and that would be him being cursed because he went through the actions of a cursed man. So cursed is everyone on a tree. So that's what Christ did. He represented that curse for everyone. Verse 14, but why that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ? So he got cursed for Israel. He was Israel's curse for people, others that could receive a blessing. Don't forget, blessings represented life. Curse representing death. The blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we, Israel, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Christ had to do what he had to do in order for the promises of the tree of life to come back around. And we, you can keep reading. But now, let's go back to Romans uh, 7. And five, Romans seven and five, Romans seven and five. For we know we were in the flesh. Sorry, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So you got to understand this literature and how it is written. So now, let's go back into Genesis, right? Let's go to Genesis 2, and let's start at verse 16. But the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden thou mayest eat my Thou mayest freely eat. So what do trees produce? Fruit, right? But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. That fruit you shall not eat of, for in the day that thou eatest of it, thou shalt surely die, right? So now let's see here. Genesis 3 and 6, just in case you don't under, don't get it, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, that's that wisdom, that's that earthly knowledge, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So they ate from that fruit that brought forth what? Death. The fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil brought forth death. Now, let's go back to Romans 7 so you can understand what this is saying. For when we were in the flesh, carnality, the motions of sins, this uh, transgression, which were by the law, knowledge of good and evil, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. That's the fruit that they ate from, right? That's the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It brought forth death. They, The only reason why they knew about this tree and how it brought forth death and etc. was because they received a law. They got the law. The law told them good and evil. That good and evil, understanding good and evil brought forth death curses, right? So then once you go to Galatians 5, 22, let's learn about the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, 
peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Remember, faith is not of the law. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So if they would have ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would have had joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. But what did they get? When they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that law, what did they get? Uh, cursed is the serpent. Uh, the woman. Now she got, hold on, let me, let, me, let me read some of it. First they said they was naked. They ran from the most high, ran from his presence, or the presence of the words. So then what happened? Curse is the serpent. Um, woman, multiply thy sorrow. And sorrow bringeth forth children, and the desire shall be to thy husband, not unto the Most High, but now unto the husband, and he shall rule over thee, and still the Most High ruling over her. Now the husband rules over the wife, because he is up to him to lead her correct now. And Adam, because you listen to your wife, cursed was the ground, sorrow they should you should eat for, thorns and thistles. Sweat in thy face, and etc. And they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So that was the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. If they would have ate from the tree of life and got that fruit, what would they would have had again? Uh, uh, Paul, since you understand these allegorical, uh, the allegorical interpretation of the story, they would have had joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against their, uh, against such. There is no law. See, when they was in the garden, they had joy. They had peace. They had gentleness. They had faith. But soon as they ate from the law, they got cursed. And curse represents death. We didn't read through that already. So now uh, we're about, about ready to end it. Let's go to Proverbs, right? Let me show you what Solomon brought out. Solomon, another one, very wise, understood the allegorical interpretations. He, have, he actually have a, a, a book called Proverbs, which was witty sayings, right, and, and et cetera. Then he have other wisdom literature, which was literature that was deep in allegorical means. So he understood uh, that. Now, why would the Most High give this man the greatest amount of wisdom. And when this man got that wisdom, sorry about that. And when this man got that wisdom, he created literature that was allegorical. So why wouldn't Moses who have wisdom create literature that's allegorical? But anyway, Proverbs 3, I'm going to read 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, that's faith, and lead not into thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. But I'm gonna read seven, but not wise in thy own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now, for if you don't understand what's going on, that might go over your head. But Paul, I mean Paul, um, <laughs> it didn't, it didn't uh, left me now. You got uh, 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 Solomon. <laughs> there we go. He's actually explaining once again about the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, I guess I could uh, read up a little further. Let me start at one. My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart, mine, keep my commandments. And so the commandments in the mind, true of life. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So that's the tree of knowledge. I mean, sorry, that's the tree of life right there. The commandments in the heart, tree of life. Now they got long life if they do the commandments that's in their mind. They have that peace. Now what do you say? Long life, peace. That is the fruits of the spirit. That's the fruits of the tree of life. But now, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. 
So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, mind. So that's faith. This is the tree of life. And lean not unto thine own understanding. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, now they have understanding of knowledge, I mean, of good and evil. Lean not into thine own understanding. Where did he get that from? Lean not into thine own understanding. When you go to Genesis 2, where is it at? Genesis 2, it says, no, Genesis 3. Genesis 3 and verse number Let's start at nine. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, uncovered, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Had thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? What did he say right here? Lean not into thine own understanding. Who told you that you was naked? That was their own understanding. Their own understanding that they was leaning on told them that they were naked. That was their own understanding. It wasn't the understanding from the Most High. It wasn't the understanding from the Word. That's why he said, who told you that you was naked? Did you eat? from that tree that brought forth a law. Did you eat from that tree? Uh, 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 a tree that bring forth the law for your own understanding? Or did you eat from that tree of life, which brings forth peace and, 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 and loving and long suffering, which is the understanding that the most high wants you in? So now, lean not into thy own understanding. Uh, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Always acknowledge the most high, true of life, and he shall direct thy paths. What did he tell them? It says, he shall direct thy paths. What happened? Genesis 3, 22. And the Lord said, behold, the man has become one as us to know good and evil. Lest he put forth his hand and take also the true of life. Who's doing that? The man, he's directing his own path. As long as he, uh, if he take forth the tree of the life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden. He wasn't taking the path that the Most High gave him. He was trying to create his own path. So lean not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Verse seven, be not wise in thine own eyes. What happened in Genesis 3? Let's read it again. Genesis 3 and 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Be not wise in, their, in thine own eyes. We are naked. They're wise in their own eyes now. Now they're the one controlling the rules. They're making the regulations. They have a law that they have to abide by. Not the most high, not this living life, not loving and nurturing and long peace and, and long suffering and gentleness and being meek. They don't have that no more. Now they have a law that tells them directly what they can and can't do, that knowledge. And what that knowledge gave them, it told them, OK, if we do this, we are perfect. But when they can't do it, they understand that they are imperfect. And a lot of imperfections bring forth sin. So now, uh, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Be not wise. That wisdom brings forth evil, sin, acknowledging sin, and etc. Um, each, a lot of people kept telling the story of Adam and Eve and the tree of life and the tree of the garden of good and evil throughout the whole Torah and the Tanakh. People just 
overlook it because they don't take it as an allegorical story. They take it as a literal story, thinking most thinking uh, uh, Adam and Eve got an apple or something and they're eating from her or figs and they're eating from it and ju the juice is running down their mouth. No, that's, no, it was all allegorical. One was for faith and the other one was for the law. Faith, the tree of life, is not of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The law. So now, and, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up and, and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So now, when I go into the book of Enoch, right? I'm gonna read the book of Enoch real fast. I know a lot of you guys ain't uh, fans of Enoch. Why? Because you don't understand the book of Enoch. And since you don't understand the book of Enoch, you try to make it be something that it is not. Then you start talking about how giants was having sex or, or uh, angels having sex and blah, 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 this and that, because you missed the whole parabolic allegorical thing that's going on. I'm not going to go over that right now. But now, this is what Enoch have in 1 Enoch 69, 8 through 11. And if you guys actually look at uh, Enoch, we, you see over 100 um uh, sayings in the New Testament found in the book of Enoch, over a hundred. But anyway, this is First Enoch 69, 8-11. I just want you guys to listen to what he said about one of these angels, right? And the name of the fourth is Penemu. This one showed the sons of men. Now listen. This one showed the sons of men the bitter and the sweet. Tree of knowledge of good, that would be the sweet, and evil, that would be the bitter. Now let me let me let me work this again. Tree of knowledge of good and evil was the law. The bitter and the sweet, good, sorry, evil and good. He just said it a different way. It's the same tree. But as he explained it, you're going to see how this was the law and etc. So now, and the name of the fourth is Penamu. This is the one to show the sons of men the bitter and the sweet and show them all the secrets of their wisdom. What did the tree brought? She looked at it because it was desired to make one wise. Look, verse nine. He taught men the art of writing with ink and paper. Why? And through this, many have gone astray from eternity to eternity to this day. For men were not created for this, what? The writing of things on ink and paper. But why? Because we got Moses writing things down. We got Enoch, he was a scribe, he wrote things down. We got uh, all of the scribes in the New Testament, they wrote things down. So why was man not created to write things down if we got so many people writing things down? For men were not created for this, that they should confirm their faith like this with pen and ink. Because a man, man's faith was not supposed to be determined upon what another person said, per se. In the beginning, now think about the times of Enoch, not our day today. This is supposed to be during the day of Enoch. So into the seventh generation from Adam, men's faith was not confirmed with pen and ink. When they was in the Garden of uh, uh, when they was in the, uh, the the Garden of Eden, they had the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They had the tree of life. It don't say anything about no paper and pen there. Either they could believe the Father. Or want their own laws. And he said right here, many have gone astray when they got that pen and paper. But now, why? Verse 11, though. For men were created no differently from the angels so that they might remain righteous and pure. And death, which destroys everything, would not have touched them. But through this knowledge of theirs, they are being destroyed. And through this power, death consumes them. So when they created their own type of laws, death started consuming them. It took over. When they start writing and etc. all of the stuff down into the days of Enoch, 
death was consuming them. And then when the law came and that was written down, death started consuming Israel. So it's the same exact thing. When the things were written down, that's when death got power to destroy them, the evil and etc. Moses wrote down the law. And when he wrote down the law, that right there brought forth death, blessings and curses, life and death, good and evil. But did they get the blessings? No, they only got the evil part of it. They got the death. But notice for men were created no differently from the angels. So before you get that tree of knowledge of good and evil, you are like an angel so that they might remain righteous and pure. So now let me, let me go to uh, Romans 3, 21 and 22. Romans 3, 21 and 22. Now notice it said, that they might remain righteous and pure. Romans 3, 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, without the true knowledge of good and evil, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So the righteousness of the law, which was the tree of life, was being witnessed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. So they were supposed to be righteous and pure. We find out here righteousness of God is through faith of Jesus Christ. Righteousness of God is through faith of Jesus Christ. Two more and then I'm going to be done. So let me prove to you once again the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the law the tree of life was faith right so once you go to first john because this is where everybody like to go to first john three and they say uh was that transgression of the law of uh, sin is transgression what's that right here let me find it uh three four Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. If you did not know sin, I mean, if you did not know the law, you would have not sinned in the first place, because without the law, sin is not imputed. So, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So this is all the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? So this to them, that's, that's sin right there, right? That breaks it down. Oh, see right here, sin, you got to have the law. So if a person is a sinner today, the, the only way to sin is if the, if the law is in, right? So now, I'm going to go to Romans 14, 23. What it says, what do Paul say? Verse 22. How's thou faith? Question mark. How it to thyself before God? Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he allowed. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. The wages of sin is death. He's taking it back to the Garden of Eden. Whatever is not of faith, whatever is not of the tree of life, is from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Whichever is not of faith is from is sin. So people are is looking at sin as dealing with the law, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But Paul is saying sin is anything not dealing with faith. Anything not dealing with the tree of knowledge of good and evil, I mean, see, sorry, anything not dealing with the tree of life is sin. So when you go to 1 John 3, 22 and 23, listen to this, and then we're going to end it in Revelation. 1 John 3, 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Are these commandments written down? First of all, we got to ask ourselves a question. Is these commandments written down? Because we had the Ten Commandments, which was written down on a tablet. The law that Moses had was written down. 
So you got the writing down of the Ten Commandments. You got the writing down of the law. This represents the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Things written. This is why Enoch is important too. So things written brought forth sin, death. It could have brought forth life, but it also brought forth death because they could not deal with the life part. They could not obtain the life because of the wickedness, right? So now you got all of the things written down. Ten Commandments, the law. So let's see if these commandments was written down. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. That's mentally. We would believe. This is dealing with faith. Mentally. And love one another as he gave us commandment. Love one another. There's things that you do with action. None of these things have to be written down. These are things mentally. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him. That's the tabernacle. And he in him. And hereby we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he had given us. So once he gave them the spirit, he's able to abide in them. So now, once you go to Revelation, right? We're going to end it with this one. You go to Revelation 22 and 1. And he showed me a pure river, the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of it, it's either two, was the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree was for the healing of the nation. Verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. That's in the, the tree of good, good and evil about the uh, curse. That's gone now. It's not mentioned in Revelation in 22. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of the God, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Now, where's all this happening at? According to John, 1 John 3 24, and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. So what's going on now is the most high and the son, sorry, the father and the son is within a person and making them be the tree of life themselves. And I know I said that was going to be the last one, but I'm going to show this point and then I'm going to be done. And that is found in Psalms, I think, chapter two. I might be three. Let's see here. So now Psalms one, Psalms one. Let's start at one and read down to three. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And this is people like, that's the law of Moses. No, it's a different law. I will write my law on the inward parts. He told us what the law was. Believe on the son and uh, love your neighbor. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So that right there. Uh, well, I'm going to read the next two, then I'll be done. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. We found out what righteous was through Christ, faith through Christ, and the uh, gifts through the Lord. For the Lord knoweth the way of righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall perish this day. You should die the death. So, Tree of knowledge, good and evil, was the law. Tree of life was faith. A person who, the just, lived by faith. They ate, partook of the tree of life. The people who did the law had to live by the law. They partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which brought forth death. 
Simple as that. So thank you all for listening in. This is Elvin Israel. I'm sorry that everything was skipping. I got to get this internet under control. But that being said, I might be doing uh, videos like this for a while. But go to YouTube, AOSD Chandler, A-O-S-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. You can look at my Facebook page. It's plastered all through that. As well as you can look up RPK, right, type in the words RPK, dash resurrection prophecy and kingdom where i am in the, and one of the instructors at well, thank you all for listening in i hope y'all have a fantastic day partake of the tree of life so you can have the long suffering patience and etc all love through christ having faith having love for your neighbors believing on christ that's all you need to partake of the tree of knowledge of, i mean the tree of life you don't need to partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you don't need laws you don't need nobody uh trying to write down and tell you what you should and should not be doing because you should be choosing to be righteous. You should be choosing to do the right thing without somebody having to tell you or make you. Thank you all for listening in. Y'all have a fantastic day. Shalom to everyone. Uh, Timmy, thank you for listening in also. All right. Shalom. And whoever else is listening in because I don't know. I can't see the other person. As well as all the other people that's going to listen in in the future are zone right now. I can't see y'all. I only see.